Welcome to Electra Online. In the last couple of videos, we saw that we could take a general circuit like this, a parallel circuit with a resistor, an inductor, and capacitor. There's no source. This is a source-free circuit with all three components. So we call that an RCL circuit. And it's a source-free RCL circuit. In addition to that, the three components are in parallel. So we call that a source-free parallel RCL circuit. We discovered that this was a differential equation that described the voltage as a function of time for that particular circuit. And then here we used the methodology of, call, of getting the characteristic equation to find the solution to that differential equation where we had alpha and omega sub naught. We define alpha and omega sub naught right here where alpha is 1 over 2 RC and omega sub naught is equal to the square root of 1 over LC. So what we realized then is this equation now has three possible solutions because this can be larger than zero, this can be equal to zero, or this can be less than zero. This gives us three different types of solutions to that differential equation. The first solution when alpha squared is larger than omega sub naught squared such that this is a positive number is called the overdamped case. That will happen when R is small, when the resistor placed in the circuit is small. Now you may wonder, well that seems odd because isn't the damping factor caused by a large resistor? Because if you have a large resistor, you take a lot of energy out of the system. If you take a lot of energy out of the system, then of course the energy should drop very quickly and there should be a very small period of damping. The damping should be very rapid. Why is that an overdamped case? Well, it's deceiving, but take a look at this. It turns out that the energy removed from the circuit is the power consumed by the resistor and the power consumed by the resistor is I square R. So if R is small then there'll be more current flowing through the branch that has the resistor and of course a larger current squared far outweighs a smaller resistor in the equation here and so the power will increase and therefore you have a much quicker dampening effect and that's called the overdamp case. So when we take a look at that, we realize that happens when alpha squared equals uh, greater than omega sub naught squared. So when we plug in what those are equal to, we have 1 over 4 r squared c squared must be greater than 1 over lc. In other words, when the inductance in the circuit is larger than 4 times the resistance squared times the capacitance, we have an overdamped case. So there's two ways in which you can calculate it. You can simply use this equation or you can simply compare the alpha and the omega sub naught. So if we have a situation where this is a positive number underneath the radical, then the general solution to the equation, to the differential equation, is that the voltage as a function of time is the first constant times e to the minus s1t plus the second constant e to the minus s2t. s1 and s2 are simply the two s's that come out of this equation right here, because in one case we have a positive, and in the other case we have a negative radical of alpha squared minus omega sub naught squared. So this is the general solution to this differential equation. Now how do we find the constants A1 and A2? Well for that we'll need the initial conditions of the current and the voltage or some sort of combination in order to calculate that. And we'll show you some examples of how to do that. The second case is where we have a critically damped case where the alpha squared is exactly equal to the omega sub naught squared. So that means that the alpha is equal to the natural frequency of the, essentially, of the circuit, the, R the RCL circuit. So when we set the two equal to each other, now we realize, of course, that L, instead of being larger than 4R squared C, L is equal to 4R squared C. Typically, what that meant was we had a larger resistor in this circuit compared to this circuit. So the larger you make the resistor, the more you go from an overdamped case to an under damp case. And so when you hit that exact spot that's for a certain value of the resistance, you end up with L being equal to 4R squared C. Notice if you don't change L and C in order for L to be uh, for in order for L to be uh, equal to instead of larger than, we simply let R be larger. So that makes sense that if you make R larger, and that's part of the reason why I wrote this equation in there, you can see that as R grows in size, then you realize that this will then become equal to L and eventually bigger than L. So that's how we go from an overdamped case to an underdamped case. But at this point, we're exactly at a critically damped case. Well, in that case, you only have one S. So this goes to zero. S is equal to negative alpha. And so therefore, you end up with 
a1 plus a2 times time multiply times e to the minus alpha t alpha of course being the singular solution of that um, characteristic equation and then finally we go to the underdam case the underdam case where alpha squared is less than omega sub naught squared so this becomes a negative number and in this case of course we say that 1 over 4 r squared c squared is less than 1 over lc or the value the size of the inductor is less than 4 r squared c so again we make r big enough that this now becomes larger than l and now we have a situation where we have an underdam case in other words, the voltage will oscillate for a while before it settles in. Now, the general solution to the equation, V of t, is equal to A1 times the cosine omega sub dt. Now, what is this here? Well, this is the damped omega. What happens is that the oscillation that happens after we have the initial conditions and the voltage starts to rip, rip, rippling through uh, the circuit, well... I shouldn't say the voltage starts rippling, the current starts rippling through the circuit and the voltage across the capacitor begins to oscillate back and forth. The frequency of oscillation, of course, will not be equal to the omega sub naught. The omega sub naught is the natural frequency of the circuit when there's no resistor. So the damped frequency is going to be somewhat slower. So we'll have to calculate that damped frequency. So we have a sub 1 times the cosine of omega sub dt plus a sub 2 times the sine of omega dt. And of course, that comes from the fact that we have a, a negative number in there. So we have the e to the i omega t, so to speak. And so in that case, we have this as the solution times e to the minus alpha t. Now, alpha, of course, is again the alpha that we calculated here, which is defined over here. Now, the damped frequency of the circuit is the square root of omega sub naught squared minus alpha squared. Again, when alpha goes to zero, well, when alpha goes to zero, when would alpha go to zero? Well, when r becomes infinite. When r becomes infinite, then um, no current would flow through the resistor, then all the current would flow through the inductor and the capacitor, and then you would have the natural frequency again. But if some current flows to the resistor, then the oscillation frequency will be slower by this factor right here. And so you can see that connection again. How do you get alpha to go to zero? When r becomes infinite. How do you get alpha to be a big number? When r becomes very small. When r becomes very small, lots of current flows to the resistor. The dampening effect is much greater, and therefore you have a much slower oscillation. Eventually, you get to critical damping, and then eventually you get to overdamping as the resistor gets smaller. And then, of course, you no longer have the oscillation that you have in an underdamped case. So this is how we calculate the the three solutions in the case of overdamped, critically damped, and underdamped. Now, the next step, of course, would be to figure out how to calculate the constants A1 and A2, A1 and A2, A1 and A2 in these three equations. And that, for that, you have to have initial conditions. If you don't have any initial conditions, then you can't solve the equation any further. But with initial conditions, you can solve for those constants and get the exact equation you're looking for. Again, what that means is you get an equation for the voltage across the capacitor. That's essentially what we're trying to do here. And that is how we get the, the result of the three different cases of damping. I think I beat this horse to death. <laughs> but sometimes this repeating it helps. Make sure the horse is dead. <laughs> helps in the understanding of the material. <laughs>